These are the Alien 150C and Alien 300C from Nanlite, their new generation of high brightness LED panels. Each lighting brand has their own lineup of pro LED panels. Ari Sky panels, Light Panels Gemini, Aperture Nova. These, you know, they're Nanlite's versions. They do have the Pavo Slim range as well, but those are designed to be more portable and lighter weight for owner operators. These are designed to fit right in on larger sets and fit into professional workflows. And they definitely have a few features that really make them stand out from those other lights I just listed. One, they're easier to rig on tall stands and boom arms. Two, they're bright. And three, these are IP55 water resistant as well. So these, could just be some of the most practical options on the market. Let's start by looking over their physical design. Nanlite claim that they're up to 45% lighter than their competition, and this is mainly down to them having a separate ballast and control unit. Whether this is how you prefer your lights to be is subjective, but there are some real situations where this is definitely very useful. Being able to separate a large bit of the weight away from the head means that these are much easier to rig up in ceiling rigs, to raise up on high stands, and to use with boom arms. It does make a big difference. If we look at the weight of just the head compared to the competition, the difference is remarkable. The panel of the 300C weighs 6.6 kilograms, which means that the Aperture Nova and Godox options are getting on for twice the weight. The light panel's Gemini 1x1 hard is lighter though, although that is a lower wattage light. The panels have lenses over each LED chip in order to increase their brightness. These mean that when bare, the lights have a roughly 60 degree beam angle. They then have this fantastic pop-up softbox, which is very practical. You can keep it on while in the case as it just collapses flat against the panel and all you have to do to release is release these two bungee cords and it instantly pops out ready to be used. It is a really nice design. It comes with two strengths of diffuser options as well, standard and light. There's also optional barn doors which is a screw on onto the front. The yoke itself is great. It's very sturdy and there's a big single lock on the right hand side which easily secures it into place. On the bottom is a mount for regular stands, but if you take off this locking knob, it becomes a junior pin which will slot right into a combo stand. There's even a spare screw thread on the side of the yoke to store the locking knob when not in use so that you don't lose it. The control box and ballast are also well thought out. They have a quick release clamp for securing them to a stand easily, and all the ports are up on the top. The battery mounts are on the side, controls on the front, and then a nice flat base on the bottom so that they're easy to sit down on the floor while in use. Overall, the build quality feels fantastic and very durable. They're also IP55 water resistant, so, or at least the panel itself is. This is fantastic. Being able to use these outside without worrying about weather conditions and a bit of rain is so useful. The panel itself will be able to be left outside in rain, snow, or dusty environments with no problems. The control box though is quite obviously not IP rated. You know, it can't be. It has big open ports on the top of it, for example. So to get around this, they have a simple rain cover which comes in the box. That's fair enough. It works well. So let's talk about how the actual light output performs. We measured each light at a distance of one meter with our Sekonic C800 with and without its softbox attached and its standard diffusion sheet attached. We also used an Aperture Nova 300C as a competitor benchmark for reference. So bare, these are really nice and bright panels. The 300 at 5600 Kelvin measured 27,000 lux and the 150 at 13,500. For comparison, the Aperture Nova which does have a built-in diffusion, so can't go bare like these can, was nine and a half thousand lux. If we put the softbox on though with the standard diffusion, the aliens are now much dimmer than the aperture at 6,700 and 3,300. But bear in mind, this is with a softbox, which is a good couple of inches away from the panel. That's gonna result in much softer light. There is of course the lighter diffuser as well if you want that halfway house between brightness and softness. I much prefer this approach personally, being able to choose. Am I trying to create as much light as possible here 
or am I looking for a softer approach in a small profile? You get the best of both worlds. In terms of colour, they also both did very well. Let's look at each light's details in turn. This is the 300C with no softbox at 5600 Kelvin and it measured at 5700 Kelvin, so slightly cooler. We got an SSI for daylight at 74, TM30 of 95RF and 103RG, a TLCI of 99 and an average extended CRI of 96.3. These are all of very good scores. At 3200, we're pretty much dead on 3200 Kelvin on the meter, which is nice. And slightly better color scores. SSI for tungsten is an impressive 85. TN30 is 95 RF again, but 101 RG. And extended CRI is 97.4. The 150C also did well. At 5600, we measured it spot on in terms of color temperature, 74 SSI, 96 and 103 TM30 and 95.4 extended CRI. And at 3200 Kelvin, it was also pretty much spot on with its color temperature, 85 SSI again, 95 and 101 TM30 again and 97.5 CRI, almost the exact same scores as the 300C. On both lights, we found adding the softbox made them each warmer by around 400 Kelvin in daylight or 100 Kelvin in tungsten. Let's quickly look at how the aperture did for reference on this. It actually scored very close to the nanolights in each area and at each color temperature. And it is worth pointing out that this is a demo model which has been powered on for a decent amount of time in our showroom. So it's coping with continuous use well, like you would expect from a light like this. So all in all, no nasty surprises here. These are very good color accurate lights, which can give you a real punch of brightness when used without the softbox. Both lights have a newly designed interface, which is really well laid out. You get three large dials to control, which can also be pushed in. Pushing in the brightness flicks the light on and off. The CCT jumps between common values, and can go between 2700 and 12,000 Kelvin, which is a very wide range. And the green magenta shift resets itself back to zero when you push the dial in. In the menus, you can choose between having fine control over your brightness at 0.1% increments or quick control at 1% increments, or my favorite, a best of both worlds option, which gives you fine control under 10% power, and then above that, it changes to 1% increments to move quickly. This way, you have that fine control when needed down at the really low dim end, but can still go very bright, very quickly, which is great. These are, of course, RGB fixtures, so you also get the normal HSI, RGBW, XY, gel, and effects modes. In HSI, the wheels will jump between common values when you push them in, and the brightness dial behaves the same way as in CCT mode. The effects mode is also really well laid out, with plenty of control to customize each effect as needed. We also get plenty of control options beyond these physical onboard dials. There's regular wired 5-pin DMX and wireless Lumen Radio CRMX, so that will fit right into professional workflows on set. Then there's Bluetooth, of course, to control from the Nanlite app, plus a simple little remote control included with each light as well. Now let's discuss power options. For mains power, they have a PowerCon style AC input, which is pretty much industry standard. But for battery options, Nanlite have really gone out of their way to give us clarity on what each kind of battery is going to give us. They have this fantastic chart on their website, which is something I'd recommend you keep a copy of when working with these lights, perhaps print it off and leave it in the cases or something like that, as it's really handy for quick reference when working. But let's go over some of the main options here. The key thing is that they let you choose between using regular 14.4 volt VLOX or the new high power 26 to 28 volt batteries like these from SWIT for example. Now these are great and will let you power big lights like these well, but you do have to be careful when using higher voltage VLOX as if you put them into a product which can't accept that high voltage, you're going to damage your product. So please do keep that in mind. These though, accept them perfectly fine. The 150C has one battery slot and it can be run at 100% brightness with one battery, whether it is a high voltage or a regular voltage. 
So you'll still want to be using decent VLOX with a good amperage and max power draw as it's still a 150 watt fixture, but you aren't limited on brightness so everything is nice and easy even with regular VLOX. On the 300C things are a bit more complicated of course, but you can still power the light to 100% with normal VLOX batteries, which is very useful. You just have to use two of them. With one battery, a single 14 volt battery will go up to 45% and a single high voltage battery can go to 75%. It's also useful that if you need to, you can put a high voltage on one side and a regular battery on the other. So although we have good compatibility with high voltage VLOX here, most people will be fine with regular VLOX batteries. So the Alien 150C and 300C are pretty practical and capable lights really. They are color accurate, bright, IP rated and easy to power from batteries. There are so many situations where a panel light like this is definitely still the most practical choice. And for those situations, these are gonna tick a lot of boxes for people. But let us know what you think in the comment section. And if you want to buy any of these for yourself, head over to ProEV, we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.